Yes, we are live now. <laughs> Right. Great. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Jace from Creative at Work. This is actually our second Facebook Live sessions on freelancing during COVID-19. We hope through uh, sharing sessions like this, it will actually bring us closer together and emerge stronger and better as a community, whether it's post-circuit breaker or as well as um, post-COVID. So in our last um, live session, we spoke about preparing ourselves for the new norm where our speakers share on what are some of the changes we can expect, what type of skills we should equip ourselves with, and also how can freelancers better protect ourselves with insurance. So with less than four weeks left to circuit breaker period um, and some industry we are already seeing coming back, slowly coming back um, to activities, I think it's time for us to start thinking about how are we going to come back from this on a personal and also most importantly on a professional level. And today we are very happy to have two of our guests, Daniel as well as Jesslyn with us today to share with us on some of the tips. Um, how can we bounce back from COVID? The format will be very similar to the last sessions, so both Daniel and Jesslyn will do a short sharing before we then open up to the uh, uh, for Q&A. Right. If you have any question, please leave it in the comment below and we will actually answer them after our sharing. So right, um, without further ado, right, um, let me quickly get Daniel to actually share uh, with this um, on what are some of the things that we can equip ourselves with to bounce back after COVID. Daniel, would you like to introduce yourself first? Yeah. Okay, I'm Daniel Yun. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, some people call me a veteran filmmaker. <laughs> some people call me a, a pioneer filmmaker. I'm just a filmmaker. I've, I've made a lot of films and uh, some of the films you have seen, some of the films you have not seen. Um, I want to say something about uh, this period in a way that is going to probably, I hope, can change the the, the mindset of some of us, you know, and that is when we say, how are we going to bounce back uh, from this period? Uh, I don't know whether you notice it or not, but actually we are already more than halfway through this stay home uh, circuit breaker period. And uh, there's a few precious uh, weeks left. When I say a few precious weeks left, I actually seriously mean uh, that these weeks are actually quite precious because I, I see this as a disruption and I see this as a good disruption. I think some of you know what a disruption means in this time and age. It means it helps us um, reset, it helps us uh, take stock, it helps us also uh, to kind of uh, see whether whatever we are doing, whether it was right and how we can do better. I think um, whatever I'm saying can sound very generic. So let me just uh, cite some examples. Uh, I will cite a few uh, people that I'm working with and then also myself. And I, I will cite first of all uh, an, an actor who is, uh, um, he's of course signed on to MediaCorp and he has been, um, uh, working non-stop. He told me he has been working non-stop. So he feels that this is a very good period for him to rest. And uh, he rested for about uh, one week, one and a half weeks. And then he, feel that he felt that he can do something now. And um, he started uh, reading up on some of the scripts that are coming in uh, for, the next, uh, for the next few uh, uh, se uh, series of his. And he's also starting to, to relook really at uh, some of the skill set that he has that can improve. And when I was talking to him, I asked him specifically if there was one, something new that he wants to acquire, you know, and he, he feels that he is lacking in the comedy um, aspect of his uh, acting skill. So he started to actually work with a, a director, um, on Zoom and on any other uh, format that he can use. When, uh, when Zoom was not available or it was just over the phone, uh, when I say Zoom was not very available, it is when it's night and he just wants to uh, talk quietly. So he, he spoke to the director and he also uh, used this period to see whether he has lost touch 
with some of the uh, producers that he had uh, previously been in touch with. So he uh, reached out to, to a lot of people and he realized that uh, in the last year or two years, he has sort of lost touch with a lot of producers. And by reaching out to these uh, producers, he felt that he was in a way sort of um, re-engaging them. And through re-engaging them, he actually saw opportunities for new projects coming into him. Okay? Although he signed on, he's also open up, uh, he's also open to a lot of uh, new projects that he can work alongside with MediaCorp or with the production house. So he, he, he felt that um, it was a period where he could rest, but it was also a period where he can sort of brush up on a skill, a period where he can catch up. But most importantly, he also feels that it is the time for him to start uh, reviewing some of the things that he has always wanted to do in his career. And he, he feels that uh, in the last two, three years, he has lost touch with what he originally wanted to do. And he felt that it was a very good period to sort of reacquaint himself with some of these uh, projects that he had in his head, or he has written down, but it was put in abeyance. And he realized that actually one or two of these projects could actually be uh, reunited, could be reactivated. And in the last two weeks when he was doing it, he felt that uh, actually during this period, it was easier for him to reach out to so many people uh, for this project that he is initiating as an actor producer. And if it was everyone was busy, I think it would be kind of difficult for him to do it. So I'm using him as one example. And when I finish, I will stop. And uh, later on, when I'll, I'll take uh, uh, questions in relation to more than just an artist, uh, a photographer, a, a, a writer, a producer, or someone like me who's developing a lot of projects. And you can ask Jace or myself some of the projects that we are developing that specifically uh, is targeted at freelancers. Okay, so this this period for this actor is a period where he brushed up on his comedy skill that he's lacking, working with a, a director in the evenings or uh, in pockets of time that he can he can find with the director. He reached out to his producers that he has lost touch with. You know, he read on the uh, read up on the scripts that are coming up for him when the the the. The, the circuit breaker is over. And most importantly, he sort of brushed up and actually bring some of the projects that have been put under the uh, in the drawer, make some of these projects come to life. And one of the projects is actually coming to life. And he's saying that during this period, it's so much easier for him to reach out to people who can help him make these projects come alive because all, everyone is in a way more free or in a way is uh, more susceptible or more open to phone calls and to talks. Okay, so I'll stop here for a while. And um, maybe, uh, Jace, you want to take over first? You want to add anything? Nope. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um, thanks a lot for the sharing. Um, that is really a great example. Um, even, even though everything comes to a stop in Singapore, doesn't mean that we have to stop working, right? Um, I think what the actor did was really, um, you know, great and actually served as a very good reminder and also example for a lot of us, right? There's really little doubt that the, um, you know, the current situation will continue to have deep and long-term effects on our economy. The one sure thing that, um, you know, even if we were to return to work, right, after circuit breakers, things probably will not return to normal um, as we know it, right? Um, however, I think as freelancers, we are actually much more nimble. So if we could actually make use of the situation like this, like for example, the actor example that you share with this, right, um, staying flexible, right, adapting to the changing demand, right, looking at what else we can do, we can definitely maximize our potential and make full use of this time. So now, uh, maybe let me hand the time over to Jesslyn, our second speaker for the day. So Jesslyn currently leads uh, practice, right, which partners with business and human resource leaders 
to deploy innovative and best-in-class um, solutions to solve business challenges. So I will hand the time over to Jesslyn to share with you more about what she's doing right now. And Jesslyn will be sharing with us um, how to engage your target audience right, um, during and post-COVID-19. Jesslyn, please. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much once again for um, inviting me to this session. I think um, this is such an important topic that we should be talking about, you know, how to bounce back uh, after COVID-19. Um, like, you know, Dan Daniel has uh, mentioned very, very rightfully that, you know, this is the time to really recharge and rescale, uh, to learn new skills or to, to, to take a break. Um, to learn how to rebound after this uh, situation. Um, and I find uh, one of the things that he said very, very aptly is also, you know, use this time to keep in touch with your past contacts, especially your clients, your ex-colleagues, your ex-bosses. Uh, this is the best time to network and to show your concern um, because this is when they remember you the most. So um, before I go into my session, I want to give a little bit of uh, introduction about myself. Um, maybe I'll share my screen because I've prepared some um, give me a minute. Huh? I prepared some. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, I'll prepare uh, uh, some slides to share. Can you guys see? Yes, we can see your screen. Uh, all right, good. Um, so a little bit about myself. So I, I now lead a practice uh, uh, that. Uh, you know, uh, deploys HR technology and learning development solutions to clients. Um, and I'll, on the side, I also do recruitment and also help uh, companies as well as uh, personal uh, professionals with their personal branding and uh, professional branding. So this is where uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. So I used to work for LinkedIn for four years. So most of my work today or my sharing today will be based on how you can engage your audience uh, during this COVID-19, uh, this CB period, uh, as well as post-CB, what you can do. So most no, of the, the things... Sorry, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jacqueline. I think the screen that you're sharing is the wrong one. It's the, it's the desktop. I think oh. you're not sharing your presentation. Hold on. Uh. Mm. Let me see what I can do. You need to choose the uh, the screen. Okay, let me see. Mm. Can you see my slides? Yeah. Ah, yes. Now I can see. It's how to engage your audience during COVID nineteen. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So sorry about this. <laughs> All right. So I want to share with some of you the current climate and the trends that we are seeing today. Because of my work in HR, um, I, I get to hear a lot about what companies are doing currently in terms of hiring and in terms of buying. So companies are now adopting very, uh, you know, cost containment as well as cost cutting measures. You read from the newspaper, you read from the, all the different news uh, articles, right, that they are trying to reduce or maintain hit count. Uh, but the good news is a lot of these jobs, they will be outsourcing them or, you know, giving it to freelance, uh, you know, practitioners like yourself. So what we need to do now is really look at which are the industries that are recovering or less impacted by this COVID-19 situation. So I've listed down here, uh, you know, some of them, uh, internet service companies, you know, like your um, Singtel or the telcos are actually doing pretty okay. They are actually not very impacted. Uh, E-commerce is also another one that um, is, is also uh, still very much in demand and still hiring or uh, outsourcing their, their work. Uh, FinTech is another one that will bounce back very quickly. Uh, because of the digital way that we are doing our business currently. Uh, health management, pharmaceuticals, uh, anything to do with biotechnology or biosciences are actually doing uh, okay. They are, they are actually recovering, they will be recovering or they are less impacted compared to the other industries. Um, and during this period, uh, because of um, the, the CB, the, the circuit breaker, all of us are being forced to stay at home. So as a result, social media now has become an even more important, uh, uh, you know, a place where we we, we can go and uh, sh uh, connect with others. So uh, that's why I want to share with you guys today on how you can engage, uh, continue engage your your audience during this period. So there are various uh, digital platforms that you can use to engage your audience. Uh, of course, I'll be very biased because I used to come from LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, in my opinion, is still the best social media platform 
to engage B two B buyers. Um, it, it has more than uh, you know two million members uh, in Singapore alone, and if you are looking at the whole of Asia Pac, there's even more. Um, and a lot of them are B two B buyers. They are the people who are purchasing. Um, you know services. So it, this is the best platform so far, in my opinion, to engage with them. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, we cannot forget about them. They're still very good platforms. Uh, like today, we are doing it on Facebook Live, right? Uh, it's a great platform to engage retail buyers. So if your business or the service that you provide is mainly to the consumers, Facebook and Instagram will be the best performance uh, when it comes to you know engaging your audience. Um, not forgetting the new uh, uh, you know upcoming platforms like TikTok. Uh, uh, YouTube is, is, is of course another one that you can uh, explore. So during this circuit period uh, circuit breaker period right what are some of the solution uh, what are some of the content that your audience might be interested to, to read about? Uh, I, I'm gonna give some examples from my own uh, experience you know how I do it, how I engage with my audience or how I engage with my uh, network of connections. So um, on LinkedIn especially, authenticity is very important. And sometimes we do need to share snippets of our personal life uh, with our professional network in order to engage with them and to build some sort of rapport. So these are some examples I'm showing here up now on the screen. Um, not sure whether you guys are seeing it yet. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, you know, I shared some uh, of my personal uh, life. Uh, I shared how I uh, turn my uh, dining table into my study area or into my work from home station. Uh, so this has gotten quite a, a good response uh, from my target audience or from my connections. Uh, the other one that I share is, you know, how we do our team huddles or team meetings. Uh, I share a, a, just a very simple picture of how we uh, continue to communicate on a daily basis via Zoom. Um, and then the other one is I shared about a, a parent uh, sharing you know how their children actually put up um, you know a sign on the on 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 the door to tell them that you you are not supposed to disturb me during this online lesson. So it's quite cool. Uh, it's quite um, interesting to share snippets of your personal life with your professional network uh, because that's when they see something about you. They see that you're also a real person like themselves, uh, and that builds some sort of a connection with them. Um, the other thing that I find that is very very helpful. Um, to, to share on LinkedIn or in any other social media platforms are things like tutorials, uh, behind the scenes, interviews and articles. So I shared some example here, um, like, you know, one of my ex-colleagues, she shared how she conduct podcasts, uh, how she conduct a webinars. So she shared a behind the scenes uh, picture and then she talked a little bit about that. Another of my uh, network, she shared, she, she had an interview with someone and she posted it on, on LinkedIn. Short videos that is going to engage your audience, not more than one to two minutes, because that's when your attention span of your people or your target audience uh, will be focused on. Um, and then James, uh, who attended one of my LinkedIn workshops uh, at Creatives at Work, uh, he, he posted some uh, pictures that he, take, he has taken. Uh, this is because of his uh, uh, profession as a professional food photographer. So these are some of the content that uh, resonates very well uh, with their target audience. So I would encourage you to start thinking about that. If you have not done anything, I've seen a lot of uh, you know freelancers who post content on LinkedIn or on social media. It's very word like so if you, you if your content are um, mainly focusing on the words it's going to lose a lot of engagement because there's so many so many and so much content going on uh, online so it's very important to ca capture your, your audience attention so um i i will end this with with a general rule of thumb uh it's really understanding who you're trying to engage and create the content that resonates with them. I cannot emphasize this enough. Uh, a lot of time we just post things that we like. Uh, no, you should not be posting things that you like. You should be posting things that your audience will like. So, you know, like the few um, uh, industries that I was sharing with you about them, you know, being up and coming or being uh, recovering or not impacted so much by this COVID-19, think about what these buyers will want to see. Uh, think about what kind of pictures or what kind of videos will uh, attract their attention um, and then create content that pertains to that. Uh, the second thing that I want to remind everyone is also be sensitive about the mood and the tone of your content and your posts. Uh, during this difficult period, 
uh, nobody likes to read about negative stuff. <laughs> so um, it's no point being negative or being whiny about the situation. Uh, always post stuff that uh, is, is going to lighten the mood and create a happy feeling uh, for your audience. This is what I will be encouraging you to do. Um, and also be as consistent as you can. Do not, do not just post one content or one article or one video and then just go silent for for a long time. Um, the general rule of thumb again is uh, as often as you can. Don't be worried about, uh, don't worry about, you know, bo boring your audience. Uh, try a few different types of uh, content and see what they like, see the engagement level, and then recreate the same thing again. Um, and post as often as you can. Don't don't be too, too um, you know, shy about, you know, putting yourself out there. Um, and last but not least, it's really pictures and videos paint a thousand words. Do not just put words. <laughs> it's not gonna, it's not gonna fly well because when people are just scrolling on their laptop or scrolling on their phone or on their, you know, mobile devices, um, all they're gonna see are pictures first. So if you are, your content or your, the post they're gonna put up is all about words, you're gonna lose the interest very, very quickly. You're gonna just get swept. Uh, up again. So uh, these are some of the, the quick tips I have for you. Um, I'll, I'll be, you know, here uh, to, to answer some of the questions you might have about uh, engaging your audience. Over back to you, Jace. Thank you. Thank you, Jesslyn. Thank you. Thanks a lot, um, you know, to both um, Daniel and Jesslyn for the sharing. All right. So right now, we will actually open it to the floor. Um, audiences who are out there, right, if you have any burning questions that you want to ask um, Daniel and Jesslyn, please um, key in the comment below and we will take the question one at a time. But before um, I actually take the question from the ground, I just thought that maybe um, to um, kick off the questions, right, um, what I wanted to uh, find out as well is also, you know, uh, maybe Daniel and Jesslyn, based on your experience, right, um, um, you know, we have been in this circuit per period uh, for almost six months or so. What, which industry do you think will be um, the one that actually will ramp up very fast? And, you know, the freelancers should keep a lookout at those industries and see how they can actually um, be more relevant, right, um, to clients, you know, in those industries. I, um, you know, maybe Daniel, do you have some thought, especially for the production side, right? Do you think it will suddenly be a situation once circuit breaker is over, it will just ramp out or it will take slowly, you know, some time for things to actually be, be, be ramped out over time? Actually, uh, I was talking to Jo Kim uh, mm. and uh, actually whole, the whole of IMDA has been uh, overwhelmed by a lot of requests for exemptions. So there are a lot of projects that are now put on hold. And uh, also there are a lot of uh, producers I know who, are, who have been developing uh, projects and suddenly uh, they were also put on hold. Okay? So mm -hmm. I, I, I would think that in my industry of film and, and also in television, I think uh, there will be it will come back to usual and I think it will be actually there will be a slight surge uh, mm. in the kind of uh, uh, work that we are doing mm. and as you know um, there are some initiatives that we are coming up with. Uh, IMDA has started with uh, MediaCorp, SBH and BitC and uh, I'm working with IMDA for on this project called Bridge where we are hoping to actually engage 100 uh, freelancers and this uh, the, the interesting thing is what we call reverse marketing where normally a, a, a brand would go to a freelancer or go to an agency and say okay please uh, market my my brand but this situation is different we we would we would uh, ask a freelancer to go to a, a small business or to go to a businessman and say hey i want to promote your 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 business i find that your business is very interesting so uh, it will be a situation where uh, by the time this project coverage comes to fruition, we will actually have a double win-win uh, situation of 100 freelancers uh, getting jobs and also 100 small businesses being promoted. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, and we hope to do it by National Day, you know, so that there's like uh, a, a diversity of, of uh, freelancers really looking at how different uh, businesses are starting uh, uh, to come back. And I was also talking to um, some property agents 
I was also talking to some people in uh, healthcare, and they are, along with uh, some other industries, um, there, there are some, of course, there are a lot of, uh, I hear a lot of um, write up that it will take a very long time to, to recover and all that. But I'm also talking to many, many people, especially the very positive, the, 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 the leaders who are very positive. They are just focusing on recovery. And uh, their focus on recovery is not just like uh, just a very positive mindset of okay, I, I'm going to focus on recovery. They are actually actually developing. They are actually getting their their uh, ramming up their their resources and the capacity, the cast to 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 be in time and to be ready when the recovery uh, takes off. You know, mm -hmm. so I I think that uh, I'm familiar with the uh, film and production film, TV uh, production, and producing area. But I'm also in touch with, because I'm a life coach, I'm in touch with uh, different diverse uh, um, leaders who are looking at how to uh, come back, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I say come back, it doesn't, for some of them, it, it has not stopped actually. They, they actually, uh, during this period, they are just ramming up, they are in touch. I don't know whether, um, Jocelyn or uh, Jace, you know, mm. you, you are familiar with some people saying, I'm busier during this period. <laughs> yeah. so, many, yeah. many, many. Uh, before that, it's like, okay, the same. And then during this period, we have to get ready for the recovery. So I really urge everyone not to be, uh, to feel down or feel pessimistic, but actually be, to ride the wave of this recovery and, and be ready for this recovery. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. How about Jesslyn, your side? Um, you know, what are some of the areas that you think will bounce back faster than the others? Yeah, I, I've shared earlier, I think um, the the anything that do, does, uh, that has to do with technology will definitely be bouncing back much faster than the rest. These companies are really ready because they they have already, uh, you know, embarked on their digital transformation. So they're very familiar with, you know, using, um, outsourcing their solutions or using digital um, uh, technology to help them do their business. So if you are in any digital or any technology sort of uh, business or work right uh, you, you're going to be in high demand but if you are not don't worry about this because you have time to catch up so use this period to upgrade you know go and take use your um, skills future fund go and take some online uh, learning and, and you know, engage a trainer to, to train you on how to you know pick up these digital skills and apply them so but if you still want to continue in the in the freelance world right I, I think there's still a lot of uh, opportunities because like I mentioned earlier a lot of companies are reducing headcount they are not hiring so I mean I mean research as well so there are companies that mean oh Jace I have to you know, freeze all my headcount. But there's still job to be done. There's still work to be done after this uh, circuit breaker, right? So who's going to do them? <laughs> so they have to find someone to do it. So uh, freelancers become, uh, or outsourcing partners become a, a good resource because they don't have to worry about, you know, overheads. They don't have, don't have to worry about CPF. They, they just have to outsource everything out to freelancers. So I, I, I still think that freelancers have, um, you know, uh, it's going to play a very important role uh, after this, you know, circuit breaker is off. Mm, right, thank yeah, you. I want, to, I want to add that actually, uh, mm. some of us, we call it the new economy. Mm. And the new economy, uh, um, when we look at the new economy and uh, how entrepreneurs uh, like to keep their overheads low. Mm. So really, it, it belongs, the, the, the freelancers is, is, a, is a resource and it's a very important resource for mm. many, many entrepreneurs and uh, leaders. Mm, mm. Yeah, I think especially for a time like this where, you know, a lot of companies, um, you know, after the circuit breaker, after, you know, the COVID will need to re-strategize and then relook at their cost structure, you know, the expertise areas and all this. So I think, you know, freelancers' expertise will probably come in, um, you know, handy for a lot of the companies. Right. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing. We have one, we, we actually have a lot of questions coming in, but let's take one at a time first. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So the first one, 
right? Um, he's actually asking, well, almost quite similar to what I'm asking, but um, maybe a little bit more details. Is all markets are down, right? Uh, where can we pitch for jobs, right? Uh, medical field, or should we seriously consider taking on a full time job? Looking at how the economy is heading. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> right, Daniel, Jocelyn, which one? Uh, you want to? You want to advise him, right? <laughs> Um, I, I don't think it's, it's uh, to be very, very honest, I don't think companies are in a big hiring uh, escapade, right? They're not, you know, they're ha not hi hardly hiring. Mm. So like I mentioned, I think freelance is still the way to go uh, for now. I think you, you will still be in a lot of demand. So just focus or just look for those uh, nuggets, look for those industries that are still, you know, booming and still working and still, uh, you know, doing business during this time and, and try to pitch jobs to them. I, I don't know what you do, Benji. So it depends on what kind of skills you have to offer them. Uh, yeah, just look at, you know, uh, what, what are some of the industries that are already, you know, bouncing back and, and see what you can do for them. I, I honestly don't think all markets are down. I think there yeah. are markets that are really up. And uh, I, I honestly think uh, when the circuit breaker ends, and when everyone starts to open up, the, the sector starts to open up, I think really it's the, it's the time for the freelancers to come in because mm. really, I, I totally agree that um, not many people are hiring, uh, mm. and, uh, but work needs to be done. Everyone needs to gear, and gear up and, and open up and uh, go back into the market. So definitely, uh, I think that it's a, it's a time where the freelancers, it, it, the, the, window is, the windows are open for freelancers, I think. Mm, mm, mm. So I think this go back to, the, uh, to your first sharing, right, um, Daniel, with regards to that particular actor, right, which is actually a very good example, using this time to you know, brush out his skills and things like that. So for the movie industry, let's say uh, the freelancers who are involved in the movie industries, um, and if let's say they want to pick up a skill or two during this time, right, so that they can actually, um, you know, to ride the wave when the surge happened, right? What kind of skill set would you recommend to the freelancers, especially for people who are in the TV and movie production industries? Yeah. I I think it is um, it's a bit again a bit generic, but uh, I think if you want to be specific, I think if let's say I'm a cameraman or let's say I'm a photographer. And I've always wanted to do something uh, related, you know, uh, to uh, photography, you know, or to let's say, for example, I I I just I'm in a studio, but what what about becoming a DOP, for example, you know, or if I'm a, if I'm an actor, you know, and I I have always looked at this producer and think, actually, I can produce, you know, I can, and I would like to actually produce projects for myself. Or I would like to project produce projects for other actors, and some. So actually, it will be good if you go into a related trade that is totally not that you are not totally uh, unfamiliar, mm -hmm. but it's something that you have been nursing an interest, mm -hmm. and, and nobody can tell you what it, it is, mm -hmm. but actually you know. And then there's this other thing, you know. And some of us always feel that oh. Um, it's not. It's not for me because I, I have already gone into this area. You know, it's mm. not. For me. But bear in mind that that is your interest, mm. and because that is your interest, over the years you have been noticing the development of this kind of. You you, you have been noticing it. You have been uh, you have been internalizing it and all that. So I I know a lot of creative people, and I've been talking to some of them, and I'm coaching some of them, and. I'm urging them to look, to open up and be very sort of, uh, be very honest with themselves, you know, and be very courageous with themselves mm -hmm. to see, okay, this is an area, you know. Yes, there's a lot of uh, voices in me saying, telling myself, no, you can't do it, no, you can't do it. But then why is this thing keep emerging, you know? It is definitely your interest and why not give it a try, you know? Mm -hmm. and because honestly, at this time, right? What is there to lose? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right. Actually, then it just kind of reminded me. I think one of the discussion that we had, right? You actually said this to me, which um, you know, now it just came back. It's like um, this period is not the question to ask why. It's a question to ask why. It's the time to ask why not, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think that is, you know, that that's really is a very good reminder. So, Jocelyn, how about how about you? Um, you know, what do you feel are some of the skill sets that um, you know, the freelancers should use this? I think just now you talk about personal branding. You know, so if let's say a freelancer has never, um, you know, do things like that, how would you advise them to get started? You know, what's the first thing that they need to do if they want to start to build their personal branding? Marketing skills. That's definitely, that is something that I feel that a lot of freelancers, especially if you are doing a lot of work like, you know, photography, camera, uh, videography, um, or all, all the back behind the scenes kind of work, nobody knows what you do. Um, so it's, it's very hard for people to take notice of you. you, you your only way of selling or marketing has always been word of mouth or referrals. No doubt, those are still the most powerful because those are the ones that are live testimonials of your work, right? Testaments to to your your the the, the quality of the the the, the work you produce. Uh, but what about new people? What about new uh, target audience, uh, clients mm. that you have not worked with before, uh, companies that you are not partner with before, uh, new production houses or new media companies? Do they know you? Uh, do you get a chance to share what you do? Uh, you know, on a daily basis. So I I guess uh, if you would ask me, this is something that very, very close to my heart. You really need to learn how to uh, present yourself and let people know what you do and how you do it and how, how great you are in your work. So this is not a time to be shy. Um, in fact, I, I mean, I'm not I'm not an overly loud pe person on LinkedIn or on, on social media, but I take opportunities, you know, you look for you know snippets of my work and I know I want to shout out to the, to the, to the people that I know that I'm good at this, you know, if you need this, tell me. Mm. So I, I think uh, marketing skills uh, is one, uh, personal branding, uh, digital skills, definitely. Uh, you know, you can't print stuff on paper and send it, you know, using snail mail anymore. It's really out there using social media to promote yourself. Uh, if mm. you're still very shy about it, right, really you have to rely on others to help you use other people's content, use other people's to help you project, promote you. Yeah, mm. so I guess these are the few, oh, networking is also very important now. Right, right, yeah. Uh, Jill, I would like to share something here. Yeah, please, please, uh, I Daniel. Because uh, it's, it's, it just happened two days ago. I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I'm coaching this actor. He, is, uh, he, he just came back from the States mm -hmm. and he just graduated, but uh, there's no graduation ceremony and because it, of this period and he's starting work. Okay, So he, uh, I'm coaching him uh, and these are the things uh, I thought uh, because uh, coaching is uh, confidential, but this is very generic, so I can share this with you. Number one, uh, he has to come back to me on these assignments, okay? He is going to now come back to me and say, he's going to take, he's an actor. So he has to come back and now network again and reach out to the producers again uh, in Singapore and in the region. So he is going to come back to me and say, uh, to be, uh, he's going to take a few photographs of himself he has, to, he has to come back to me on which photographer, how much, uh, ma, uh, how much money want, does he want to put aside, and the kind of you know, the kind mm. of images that he wants, you know, maybe five uh, different uh, types yes. of photographs. Okay, mm. so that one assignment where he will come back to me and say, okay, I'm going to reach out to this photographer or Daniel, do you have a photographer in mind? You know, and these are the kind of uh, uh, shots that I want to uh, to, uh, to shoot for myself, you know. And uh, do you have any other ideas for this? So this is one. Mm. And then I, he has to do, uh, because he has already got some work, he has to do three show reels. Uh, three shows, each show reel is uh, different and each is no more than two minutes. And it's very different to different kind of producers. Okay, one may be uh, to TV producers, one may be to film producers, and one may be, or it could be a, a certain kind of a director. And then the last showreel is for him to be, to tailor make a showreel specific to a brief. Let's say, for example, uh, he's meeting this director uh, who has a role in mind. So he would then quickly have to cut a simple showreel uh, for this director. So there are four showreels that he has to work on. The next thing is his social media presence. Uh, because right now, at this present moment, if I say, oh, do you know this actor? Mm. You know, normally nowadays, uh, a, a producer or director say, oh, no, let's just tell me his name. I will go to his uh, Facebook and I will, uh, I will look, look up, you know. 
uh, I will go to his uh, Instagram uh, and I will see. You know? So actually, these accounts are actually very, very good, but actually also very, a uh, person, an uh, actor can be very vulnerable. Okay. Mm. Now, I think an actor needs to keep a, a level of mystique. If let's say you have a, a bad hair day and then you 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 show and oh this is a bad hair day I have a bad hair day you know or you you, you just show uh, certain things about yourself that is actually because that's actually your uh, um, your show reel in, in, in a way it's your show reel in a way it's what we call the the um, your your CV so it's very important for him to now make sure that they are. Uh, he must be aware that they are accessible to producers and directors, so he has to clean it up. That if he wants to have a personal account, it's up to him. But as far as his official uh, account are concerned, uh, Instagram and Facebook, they have to be uh, proper for any director and any uh, producer. Mm. And then uh, he's writing five scenes for himself because he's also a writer. And he can get a friend to shoot the five scenes, the five scenes that he's always wanted to act. You know, mm. for example, a, a scene that will show a certain kind of range that he wants to do. Okay? And then the last thing is he needs to then come back to me and say, there are certain things about my physical bill that I need to work on. Like maybe I want to lose five pounds. Maybe I want to uh, tone up and things like that. So suddenly he has so many things to do. You know, and he has to do it by a certain time. And he's so happy because suddenly he becomes, on top of his regular work, he's going to be very busy. But by the end of it, he will have so much things that, uh, uh, that if it was on a regular basis, he will probably not have the time to do it. Right. Right, yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah, I think social media definitely is very important. Even now, when we actually uh, come in touch with a new freelancer, I think that's also, you know, the first checkpoint that we'll go to, right? Okay, thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so we have another question here, right, uh, from Go In Shen. So his, oh, his question is directed to you, Daniel. So do you think the movie industry will be affected in time to come or it will bounce back? The movie industry cannot be any worse. <laughs> yeah, uh, it cannot be any worse. Uh, it will. It has. It will go into a, a kind of a bit of a bit of a recession, so to speak, because mm. the cinemas. I mean, I was talking to uh, to uh, IMDA. The cinemas, the concerts, and all that will be the last to open, right? Mm. So, but uh, the movie. In, uh, that is the exhibition. Exhibitors, you know, the exhibitors don't really have to worry because um, in the whole film industry, the exhibition is the most lucrative. You know, they, they, their focus is just putting bums on seats, selling popcorn, and, all that. and they have been doing very, very well because of all the blockbusters. And all the blockbusters are already, all ready to come back because they they, they have been held back, right? So mm -hmm. the, the, the sequel to A Quiet Place, all the Marvels, all waiting to come back. So. The second half of the year, you will be chocker block with good films. That's one thing. So don't have to worry for this, the cinemas. Okay, now back to the production, right? For the production, I honestly think it is a blip, and actually, it is a very good time for filmmakers to focus on the script. The problem with Singapore film uh, industry is we don't have enough time to focus on the script. So all those projects that are held for some reason they have the time. And I, I, you know I'm in touch with so many directors mm. and, uh, and, and writers. They have the time. And there's one person who is on this call now. You know, he is writing, you know. So they are now really brushing up, tightening up the characters, reworking on the, 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 the structure, reworking on the dialogue and all that. I honestly think, uh, okay, I'm an I'm, 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 I'm reasonably uh, positive person, okay? Mm. But I have to be, you know, to, 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 be, to be in this industry. But honestly, my positivity has worked for me and I think it should work for you. So I really think that it is actually a blip. And very soon, those uh, projects in development would be quick. Once everything is okay, I mean, I, I hear from Joaquin that they are, they are coming back 
Jeremy and a few of them are working uh, on a, a new um, normal for, for on-set production. Mm. It will not be big production. So the media corp of the world will probably have to strip down, you know, uh, streamline. But our film industry, we, we don't have that kind of big budget musicals anyway. So I think we are going to be more than just fine. Mm. Right, thank you. That's good to know. <laughs> right. So, okay, so we have another question. Um, okay, thanks for doing this live stream. Do you guys for, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, Yen Ling, Ken? Yeah, okay. So, if we change our direction right now, how will that affect our branding? Um, how can we pivot our upward brand if we are already known for something else? So, maybe, um, Jessalyn, you want to take this first? Then, Daniel, please feel free to jump in. Um, I, it's a very difficult question, you know, for anyone who wants to switch course, uh, this is the number one concern on, on, on your mind, right? Um, it's definitely difficult to get to be known as something else or some, someone else or, or some other kind of expertise, but you have to start somewhere. Uh, if you, you like, like Daniel mentioned, right, um, it, it's, it's not about you have to really follow, follow your passion and follow your interest. If this is something that you, you get a chance to, to pivot towards now, I think it's great. Uh, and start small, start a little bit, you know, test with a, a, a few people or a few uh, uh, target audience or a few network of uh, uh, connections. Test your brand, the new brand out and see how it goes. Get their feedback and then just improve it or, uh, you know, upgrade it along the way. It's definitely difficult to, to switch, uh, you know, what you're known for um, to, for, to some Something else. Uh, this is definitely not not an easy thing to do, but you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, some 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 people I've seen, like like Daniel be, uh, mentioned before, right, is that they they have one Instagram that is known for this, and then they have another Instagram pro profile that's known for another something else. So he could be a kung fu actor in one profile, and then the other one is a you know romantic uh, uh just to showcase a different the range <laughs> that he or he, he can do. So uh, this this is also one way, you know, having different type of accounts, but it's going to be very very tough for you to maintain and upkeep. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Right. Daniel, can I, can I, I yeah. I think yes, if you're if you're gonna change direction because you feel pessimistic about your present industry, please don't. Okay. Mm. But if you want to use this period to to open up yourself and see, hey, I want to take stock, maybe I want to change direction. Yes, this is the right time. Mm. And um, then how do you want to uh, brand yourself? Okay, whatever that you have done in the past will never, never, never go to waste, okay? You, you, you can leverage on it and say, I was previously in this and now I'm in this. And whatever that you have done in the past, okay, will add on to whatever you are doing in the future, okay? Like I said, uh, I think uh, HR people would, nothing supersedes experience, nothing supersedes maturity, and nothing supersedes uh, exposure. So all these are very important for you, okay? And, uh, Honestly, right now, right in the past, we 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 are so uh, uh, beholden to the various channels. But right now, we can create our own channels. It, the whole media landscape has become so democratized that we can be our own uh, channel. Okay, so uh, what I'm talking about are social media. But on top of that, also available to you are YouTube available to you are other platforms that you can create your own uh, so-called content. You know? And I think please don't underestimate the importance of social media for your career. Okay? Mm -hmm. and I think uh, a lot has been said this uh, evening, but really honestly, every, there are many times when I want to uh, work with someone and I, I look at their social media it helps me decide whether I want to uh, work with this person or not because the social media in a way shows the real self, you know. I'm not asking you to just then, therefore, put up a false front, but you have to be careful and you have to put up your, what, what we call put your best foot forward, you know. And it really, I mean, there are times when I look at, I hear, glowing reviews, and I go and look at this person's uh, uh, Facebook account, you know, and one thing about it that is not said here, which I said to the actor is, bear this in mind, 
the last thing you want is that your social media account shows you to be a boring person. You know, no, 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 you know, oh, I cannot do this. Oh, I cannot do that. Oh, I cannot do that. There's one guy I'm coaching, you know, he is so worried. He's, he comes from a very serious family. He's so worried to post anything because he, he, he's so worried that uh, whatever he posts will show something about him that he may not like, you know. Mm. But now he's so happy because I think the last thing we want is to be boring. You know? <laughs> yeah, it, it's really to be boring. Every day you show, you know, I, I bread, you know. Then porridge, you know, and then Hokkien me, and then you know, you know, like food. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay, thank you, thanks, Daniel. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we have a lot of questions coming, but we probably have only time. Um. To two. Um. Just one or two more. Yeah. Um. So, okay. Maybe let's take one more question. Let's see. Uh. Okay. Oh, okay, Benji again. So, any innovative way to earn revenue right now? Wow, this is such a big question. Okay, you answer that, okay? No, I think, I think uh, whatever revenue streams you have, uh, you have to make sure that they are the streams, the water are flowing, lah, you know? <laughs> You know, and they are flowing in, not flowing out. Okay, and then on top of that, you then you cut and increase. You just build the capillaries so that there are more revenue streams, lah, coming towards you. I think it's very difficult to uh, to to tell you what because we don't know what you do. But I think it will go back to the mindset of um, this whole idea as a freelancer, right? You you are your best uh, ambassador. You are your best uh, um, revenue earner. So every day if you wake up and you tell yourself that whatever it is, you're going to make it happen, it will happen. You know, if it, if it doesn't happen, you make it happen. Then it will happen, you know. So it's very easy to say, but uh, I come from the world of... Uh, previously, Rain Tree was, uh, was like the major studio in Singapore. You know, and now I'm, I'm like an independent uh, uh, filmmaker. But during that time, it was not easy. Everyone thought that uh, this is the time Daniel Yun would fall flat on his face because there's no uh, film industry in Singapore. And then we build one. You know, me, Eric Ku, uh, Jack Neal, I, I rallied these people together and I produced over 30 uh, movies. You know, some of them are uh, losses. But some of them made a lot of money, but a lot of them were milestones. You know, they 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 they, they were groundbreaking uh, titles like A One, I Not Stupid, you know, The Mate, The Eye, collaborations like uh, Painted Skin and all that. I mean, really, honestly, you know, if if you were very rational and very cautious, you would tell Daniel, "Don't do it," you know. But we went ahead to do it, so it's just a mindset. Mm. Right. How about um, Jesslyn, um, you know, from your clients, you know, um, that you work with, do you see any innovative way of earning revenue? I think that the, the key word here is innovative. Um, and, and you have to be very creative in the way that you package your services. I think the, the old way of packaging it by hours maybe maybe wrong yeah. so you really need to yeah so you really need to understand your 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 clients you know what they need right now and then see what you have and package it accordingly you know a lot of us we have like you know our own brochure of uh, catalog of services and the price and then we just show it to our clients and say okay just pick one out of that right it's not a buffet they, they don't like that anymore so you really need to cater tailor uh, your solutions and and given the current situation where you can't go out and sell you can't go out and and earn money so to speak think about making it online think about you know a lot of my um colleagues uh you know they are like life coaches they are like coaches executive coaches they are trainers what do they do now they they cannot conduct any training so what do they do they move it online everybody everybody is doing webinars now um if you can't if you can't sell immediately do free do, do complimentary webinars, one hour, you know, you have nothing else to do anyway, what, what are you going to do, right? So just mm. give, give first and then take back later. So I think currently it's really the mindset must change, like like what Daniel mentioned, it's really 
um, moving forward with the times, you know, look mm. at what the market needs, not what you have only. Look at what the market needs, look at what you have, package it accordingly. I think uh, I cannot emphasize enough, you know, personal branding, marketing mm. your solutions, uh, letting people know what you do, what you can do, using your past clients as your testimonials. This is the best time to keep in touch with them, you know, send them a basket of fruits or whatever just to, you know, continue that that rapport building and then they will be the ones to who will sell your services for you online as well yeah so get, get them to be your advocates get them to talk about your your good your your strengths yeah mm -hmm. so innovative is up to you it's up to you benji to think about you know how you can be creative and, and create something out of whatever you have currently mm. i want to add something else and yeah. that is um during this period right this few weeks into months, right? There were a lot of new things that have come up, like uh, Zoom meetings and all that. There are a lot of new things, and every industry has new uh, so-called uh, things that they have uh, structured. And uh, the good ones, please continue. You know, it doesn't mean that by the, the 30th of uh, May we stop all these things. I was talking to uh, two directors in the most difficult industry, SIA. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is the most, most difficult industry. And another two, you know, in STB, worse, you know. These are the worst two hits, but, you know. And you know what? They are so positive. What they, they, they were developing a lot of new systems, a lot of new procedures during this period because they couldn't get out, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are telling me that some of these procedures, some of these systems will be very effective, you know, even without... Uh, uh, stay home, you know, because some of it you really honestly don't have to meet, you know, and honestly, some of the uh, situations you really don't have a lot of things will be online, a lot of things will be, and, and this is just examples. There are other things that uh, the systems that came up because of this period that can continue, and they mm. should, if they are mm. good and effective, they should, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So just like the um, work from home arrangement, right? I think for the longest period of time, you know, I mean, for for ourselves, because we have uh, we are in the industry, we are lucky to be in the industry in 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 the industry that allow us to have flexible working arrangement. Yeah. But I think um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of company are uncomfortable. But then now with COVID, no choice. Everybody will have to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for sharing. We'll just take one last question, right? Um, from, from the floor. And then um, yeah, so this is um the last question that we'll be doing. So will the movie slash TV industry become even more risk adverse in terms of creativity? So um Drew is of the view that Singapore players are usually pretty conservative to begin with already. So what do you think of this, Daniel? Yeah. Uh I okay, uh, the rule of time is generally uh from the from the outside looking in, you know, yes, I think uh, it, it can appear conservative because the 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 the, the um, what is the word the censors the the the, the situation uh, in Singapore uh, media industry are governed a certain way, you know, but honestly, if not for some mavericks, uh, if not for some people who are not risk adverse, we would not have come this far, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, for every uh, uh, three or four people who would follow the book, there's going to be one who is going to be breaking the rules. And I want to honestly tell you this, and I'm not saying this because I'm in the industry. Okay, I'm very, very proud of the young filmmakers. They are bold, they are proud, and they are resourceful. Okay. They, they they will come to you and say yeah but Daniel if you are if uh if we are going to do IMDA for this and they are going to tell me that I can't do this I'm not going to uh, just take it I'm going to go to uh, another uh uh, uh, uh store to get my uh, funding so there are a lot of young people who are bold mm -hmm. and who are really proud of what they want to uh, do and what they stand for and you know? and they want to be resourceful in the past you know it, it's not like that. But um, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, okay, there are mavericks, there are people who push the limits and they will continue to be people like that. You know? So I think uh, even uh, on TV now, I think there are some, pro there are some you know how uh, the TV stations have opened up to a lot of production houses in Singapore. And honestly, I mean, I've been watching 
even uh, documentaries on China News Asia, they are really quite good. You know, they are really quite good. And some productions on Five and, 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 and Channel 8, you know, are also quite good. But the film industry is, is, is a totally uh, independent uh, uh, industry. And you see thing, people pushing, you know. That's uh, in the last two years or three years or four years, independent film have come of age. Ilo Ilo, Sandcastle, Hop Eye, and The Land Imagine, they have won awards, uh, international awards. And these awards will never be awarded to uh, films that are risk adverse, they are not pushing the limit, they are not, uh, they are very worried about touching on any subject matter. And I know Jun Fong's next film, I know uh, um, a few directors' uh, next film, the subject matters are hardly risk adverse. They are going to be hot button issues. Mm. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Daniel and Jesslyn, for sharing. All right. Thank you so much, um, audiences. Unfortunately, we cannot answer all the questions, right? Um, but we still thank you for staying with us um, during the last one hour. So I hope you will find the session useful. We'll wrap up tonight, right? And hope to see you all soon. If you'd like to get in touch with Creative at Works, please follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, or even LinkedIn. And also, please feel free to reach out to Daniel as well, um, Daniel and Jesslyn on social media, right? Um, so with this, we we will end the session here and I really thank you, Daniel and Jesslyn. Thank you so much for the time. Yeah. Bye audience. Bye everyone. Thank Bye. you, Jace. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. See you.